Good evening, everybody. How are you doing? Just checking on who is uh, joining. I can see people join during the little countdown and the uh, and the title sequence there. It's Monday night. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Ross, and welcome to Acts on This TV's Motivation and Mind Hacks Periscope. Steve is joining us straight away. Um, I just put a little uh, Facebook video out that I think uh, people will relate to in the Facebook group. If you're not a member of the Facebook group for Acts on This, come and join facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Acts on This TV. You can see Lucy's joining. In. Let's see a few other people who are joining right now. Fanny's here. Um, we're going to give people a few minutes to join. Thank you for being here. Um, tonight's going to be an interesting one, guys. Um, like I say, for those who don't know me, I do two Periscopes a week. One on a Monday, one on a Wednesday. On a Monday, we do something called Motivation and Mind Hacks. On a Wednesday, I do a book club. But tonight's Motivation and Mind Hacks is going to be a little bit different because um, it's probably going to be a motivation and rant to be honest, I don't I don't normally rant at all, okay? I don't generally like rants. I don't like focusing on anything that's negative. I uh, very much promote positivity within the acting industry, but there's been a number of things that have cropped up over the last 12 months, particularly within the acting industry, actually 18 months, that I've been sitting back and noticing and noticing more and more and more and more until this week, it's kind of come to a head and I'm like, right, I've got to say something about this. So... Um, we're going to have a bit of a bit of a of a chat tonight, and I want people to join in to give me their opinions, give me their experiences of what we're talking about, um, and uh, and yeah, hopefully we're going to you know we're going to put a uh, the industry to rights. Really, thank you for sharing this. Um, Julian's just joined as well. Thanks for sharing NBN Fitness. Scott's here as well. Whilst people are joining, I'm going to throw up a slide that just shows you um, in a very tame way what we're talking about tonight, and that is knowing who to trust for acting training and advice. I did title this scope a nuclear rant on the rip-off merchants appearing in the acting industry. <laughs> so you get more of a, uh, of a gist for what it is via the title of the scope. But this is it in a, uh, in a polite way. Before we start, please share this. As always, share it. I know everybody shares it normally, but share, share, share. If you don't normally share, share this, because this is actually like genuinely going to benefit anyone who's an actor in the acting industry um, because um, it's uh, it was, it was really important. Please share it. This is really going to help people. Fanny says she only just noticed that the Bulletproof Actor logo is a man and a woman. Ah, okay. Yeah, so for Bulletproof Actor, yeah, you'll notice the logo there, Fanny, on the left-hand side is a man on the right, woman on the left, and you'll notice a shield in the middle. It's all about bulletproofing and shielding your mindset. It's a shield protecting the brain. You'll see the clapperboard little squares on the on the left-hand side there. Quite subtle little details uh, within that logo. That's for Bulletproof Actor, guys. Bulletproofactor.com. ActsOnThis.tv is the uh, the main acting site that I run as well. Said she's never seen that before. Well, now you have, Fanny. But please, yeah, share, guys. All you need to do, click the three dots at the bottom of your screen. Uh, that'll bring up a little menu to share the broadcast. Put it out on Facebook. Put it out on Twitter. Let's get as many people at this party as possible, and let's call out as many of the shysters as we possibly can in the acting industry tonight because I am seeing... Lots and lots of people pop their heads up, offering actors the world, and they really have zero qualifications and zero chance of providing those actors with the thing they are offering them. Um, so, uh, yeah, we're going to give people just a couple of minutes now to join, and then we uh, will begin. Just give me some uh, some comments now if you've noticed this. Have you noticed an influx of service providers in the industry who are promising the world, delivering nothing, and ultimately just exploiting actors for their cash. Many of these people are failed actors themselves who have done, I was going to swear there, who have done nothing in their own careers. You can check them out online and you're like, wow, this person set up this so-called amazing masterclass school, this, that, and the other. And then you look at them and go, wow, you've had no experience, you've got no credits. How on earth could you possibly set this up? Steve says, massively, I've turned down a few offers, he says. So many acting classes around, says Lucy. Um, that's not to say all acting classes that have popped up are bad. I'm going to discuss that again tonight, guys, how you can spot the good ones and how you can spot the shit ones. Um, because I think the industry definitely needed acting schools that weren't accredited acting universities or traditional drama schools. But there's a lot of exploitation around. Um, Fanny says exploitation about or, or around performers, something about that. I, I, I totally see that, Fanny. Um, it's why it's best to do your research first, says Steve. Um, and Fanny says because you're preying on people who desire attention. Yeah, exactly. I think actors are easily sold to, um, unfortunately. So I, um, I want to talk, guys. I'm going to start off with this slide here, and I want to talk about what I see 
as an industry-wide epidemic that's happening right now. And like I say there, it is pissing me off so much right now, okay? I've worked as a professional actor for 12 years, okay? Before that, actually, another decade as an amateur, I guess you would call it, working in children's TV and that kind of stuff. Sasha, good evening. And in that time, I've noticed a trend that I now see a big problem for the acting industry. So back in 2005, when I first left drama school, there, were, there really were like only a handful of places to train as an actor that weren't accredited institutions. So you basically had to go to drama school or one or two really kind of established acting schools outside of the big institutions, okay? Now, there was a gap there. There definitely was a niche that needed filling. And a few really well-known acting coaches who were really respectable in my eyes, you know, had a good track record. And TV casting directors, they saw a need to provide ongoing training, effectively, outside of drama schools. And from 2005 until 2009, I saw some great, I mean, really great, weekly acting classes set up and they really were improving the industry they were a force for good and they were out to genuinely help actors in the industry okay these were exactly what the industry needed okay and they provided actors with the training necessary to begin nailing tv auditions that was what was happening they were bringing these classes about that particularly focused on tv because traditional drama schools just don't do it okay i went to one of the best drama schools in the country and we still only had five days of tv training in three years it's not good enough. I hope drama schools have changed that now, but I've got a feeling they haven't, okay? So when I left, I myself attended Act for TV. Okay, that's a drama school, uh, not a drama school, it's an acting class run by Michael Jackson from Beverly Keogh Casting, one of the most respected casting directors in the industry. Uh, and I went to that from 2006 to 2008, and it literally was one of the best things that I could have done for my career. And I recommend everybody does a weekly acting class or a bi-weekly acting class um, because it's really going to help you, you know, stay supple, and um, you ultimately, you know, you, you're constantly working on your craft, which is what this industry is about. But unfortunately, I saw some other actors who were fucking failing in their own careers, okay? And they saw a commercial opportunity here and began to see that, and I began to see them exploit, okay, this newly emerging niche, okay, that was, you know, providing training for actors outside of drama schools. And over the last 18 months, I've seen more pop-up acting schools emerge than ever before, okay? And these are schools run by actors who promise the world to newbies. I'm talking specifically actors who run these schools, okay? It's very different if an actor has turned casting director and now runs a school or an actor has turned, you know, to a different area like an agent and are now running acting classes. That's different, okay? I'm talking about actors who are pro pro professing to be actors running these uh, these acting schools, okay? And they are promising the world to newbies in the industry who don't know very much about the acting industry. However, when you research these so-called professionals and you look at their spotlight CVs and their IMDB pages, you instantly see that they have achieved fuck all in their own acting careers. And I'm sorry for the language, <laughs> but I don't really care who I offend tonight because this offends me massively, all right? Their promises of acting career success are about as realistic as me promising to make you a Formula One driver having never driven a car in my life, all right? I um, can't drive because I have an eye condition, all right? So I mean that literally. I could never teach you how to drive, right? I've never done it myself. Fan Fanny says, what constitutes as fuck all? So for me, Fanny, the reason I have never... I mean, I run acting platforms like actsonthis.tv that gives people access to some of the most established names in the industry. That's what my services provide, okay? It's not me pretending I am a guru and saying, look at me, do exactly as I say, and I will make you a star. I'll show you how to write your cover letters and how to get you th you're this right and you're that right and you're going to be amazing. And then you look at my IMDb and say, I've got nothing. You wouldn't. You'd say, I've probably got, I don't know, 17, 18, 19 credits, okay? And some of the biggest programs in the UK, right? They're not been massive, massive parts, but I'm not professing to be an acting coach and teaching people the craft, okay? I would never do that. The people who I see who are professing to do that and be able to do that, I'll often go on their IMDb's or their spotlight pages. They'll have done one corporate piece, a short film, or a student film, or something like that. They've done no no TV, no established TV, no established film, no decent theatre credits. I mean, literally just all amateur stuff, or the basic, most bottom of the rung jobs that you've all got to go through. There's nothing wrong with those jobs per se, but you can't then teach people to go, I will teach you massive success. And you go, well, what, what success have you had? Why aren't you using it in your own career? Okay, you're clearly not using what you're professing to know because you ain't having the success you're promising me if I use this stuff as well. Um, so I see that, I put that at the bottom. I'm prepared to call them crooks, all right? I see these crooks 
peddling their courses and acting business masterclasses day in and day out on social media, no doubt making a killing, teaching actors the shit that obviously didn't work in their own careers before they gave up acting. Want to be a star, want to work in Hollywood, join our course. Uh, who said that? Yeah, that's exactly what it's like, though. Um, Fanny says, but I haven't done much. I'm running an improv group. Yeah, Fanny, you're doing something as a collective. It's completely different to promoting yourself as a guru. You're not saying, I'm an improv guru. I'll teach you how to do improvisation. You're making a collaborative project for people to enjoy, which is brilliant. It's very, very different than charging people. If you, Fanny, if you were charging people £60 to do your improv share and dare on a Thursday, then you'd be in the same boat. I'm going, well, you can't, why you, you, your purpose is not pure. Your purpose isn't to help people improvise. Your purpose is to earn money out of people. That's a very, very big difference, and you're not like that. Your stuff is very genuine, pure, and has integrity. Okay, so I'm talking about actors who gave up acting and are now promoting themselves as gurus who can help other people have acting career success they've never had themselves, okay? If they knew how to become a super successful actor, would they not have used their own fucking advice to become one themselves? Because they would have done, <laughs> and they haven't, all right? That's my point, okay? So tonight, I want to just go through a few things that I just really want people to know in order to actually figure out who they can trust in this industry. And some of these things will be seen as quite straightforward, but I don't think everybody's always aware of them. Um, Steve says, bit of a bee in my bonnet. Brian's here. Good evening, Brian. It's just, I hate seeing people getting ripped off. Steve, I hate seeing people give hard-earned money. I know what it's like to work in a shop for minimum wage, struggling as an actor and paying for things. Now I know on the other side of what it's like, you know, I actually offer some products myself that, yes, of course I charge people for, but it's with absolute utmost integrity. And I feel the products that I supply, I actually have the, the, the credits and the credence to back it up. And none of my stuff is actually, I'm going to teach you how to act. I would never, no matter how successful I got, probably do that because I don't feel that's something that you can necessarily just teach. We all have our own individual methods and it's very individual to us. And what works for me might not work for somebody else. I'm not going to push it onto you. What I tend to do with what I offer is document everything I'm doing and then go, guys, this is working for me. Why don't you try it? And it's the reason why... I'm on here at nine o'clock Monday and Wednesday for free, giving an hour or an hour and a half of my time to whoever wants to watch to try and help them. I'm not going, come on Periscope and I'll teach you what to look out for in acting class, but it's just 10 pounds. No bullshit. My integrity is pure and that's why I'm doing this shit for free. Okay. So to find out who you can trust in this industry, it's actually pretty straightforward, guys. If you are willing to put in a couple of hours research, like someone said before, it's about researching. And if you're prepared to make a phone call or send a few emails, okay? And let's just go through a few steps that you might not have taken yet, particularly if you're new to this industry, that you really must take before you give any money to anybody for anything. And all this stuff, you know, applies to anything that I offer. Anything, actonlist.tv, research it. Research the money it raises for charity. Research the three, four hundred hours worth of free content on that website. You know, research everything because this all still applies, okay? If you want to know if something's got integrity or not, research it. Number one, phone a friend, all right? Well, not actually a friend, okay? An agent or a casting director, actually. Before you even contemplate, has anyone ever done this? Before you even contemplate attending a new acting class, I want you to call a reputable agent in your area. If you're in Manchester and you're doing acting class in Manchester, phone a Manchester agent, London, London, okay? And ask if they have ever heard of this acting school or teacher that you are thinking of going to, okay? And just say, have, you know, are they on your radar? How, if, you, if they're an agent, do they represent anyone who's currently going to that class? Sasha says, I've done a couple of the free tasters in the past too before I've paid. We're going to talk about that, Sasha, because that's super important. Okay, so first of all, just call a reputable agent in your area, okay? Number two, well, it's not number two, it's still part of number one. Even if the answer is yes from your agent, okay, I want you still to get in touch with the casting director whom you know and ask them to, okay? Would they recommend this school or this teacher? Has that casting director seen any of the students from that school? Has the casting director sat in on any classes? Have they given anyone from that school a job? Do they have a relationship with that teacher? Do they go to that teacher to ask them to supply them with people to audition sometimes? Because that's how it works. 
I've worked for many casting directors who will go, right, I'm looking for, particularly younger actors, I'm looking for someone 16-ish. They're not going to be at drama school yet. I'm going to go to the local acting class, you know, and I'm going to see this guy, and I really, re you know, recommend this person's work. I remember when um, I was working as a casting assistant myself, and we would go to people like David Johnson in Manchester, great reputation, really good reputation. Peter Hunt, when he did Act Up North, he's now the casting director for Hollyoaks, but great reputation. Um, you know, there's some great acting classes with some great reputations with casting directors. So even if the answer is yes from your agent, and they've heard of the person who you're thinking of doing an acting class with, get in touch with the casting director and ask them as well, okay, and ask if they would recommend that teacher. Now, let's suppose the answer is yeah, okay, they're all right, okay, but well, let's move on to part, to part two. If the school is ran by an ex- or a current actor, okay? It could be an ex-actor. Most of them are run by ex-actors because they failed their own careers, okay? But if it's run by an ex-actor or an actor who's current, you know, is still professing to be an actor, I want you to IMDB them, okay? And I IMDB, for those who don't know, is called International Movie Database. And it's the biggest resource on the internet for acting credits, okay? And to look if anybody is actually bona fide or not. Run a simple search for this actor who's running this school on IMDb and just look at their past credits, okay? This is only if they're an actor. If they're professing just to be an acting coach, it doesn't matter. I've not got a beef with them. This is only actors who are setting up acting schools, okay? If all they have is a couple of student or short films to their name on IMDb, I want you to ditch them right away as a school that you would potentially pay them 20, 30 pounds a week to go to. Because you can find an abundance of acting classes out there run by great people with real good credits, backed up, you know, history in the industry for the same price. Why on earth would you spend money taking advice from an actor or an ex-actor who never achieved success in their own career? Um, write that comment again, Fanny. I didn't see it. You said, what if they only something? They clearly only know how to do the acting industry wrong, guys, okay? If they haven't had this success, that they're promising you, oh, come and do my class and I'll teach you how to write your CV and I'll teach you how to write to, um, casting director so you get a reply every time. Bullshit, why haven't you used that yourself? Why haven't you got the credits? Why are you professing to know this now? You obviously haven't used it in your own career because they only know how to do it wrong, okay? So IMDB, what if they only worked in theatre? Then you spotlight, you spotlight, um, or just Google them. If they've got a website, anything, look up their credits, Fanny. But most people who are running acting classes these days are running TV acting classes because they all try and get actors in based on, look at what equipment we've got. Oh, we've got a red camera. Oh, and I mean red, not as in the colour, as in red, the, the manufacturer, by the way. Oh, we've got this camera, that camera. Yeah, they've spent a few grand on a camera. They've got fucking no idea how to use it. Okay, so they try and entice you in with all the equipment. So they're mostly TV and film classes that are popping up right now. Okay, if all still looks good by this point, so you've asked the, um, the agent, you've asked the casting director, they've gone, yep, yeah, yeah, this is a great class, this is good, and you've IMDB'd the person, and they're like, yeah, this guy's sweet, or this girl's sweet, they've got some credits to back up what they're professing to know. I want you to ask them to audit a class, and that basically means sitting in on a class, okay? You audit the class, it's totally normal to ask for this, like Sasha said, she's done this a couple of times, and it's actually not just normal, it's expected, by the best acting schools, okay? Some even insist on this before you part with any cash, and that's a great sign of a school with integrity. If they're like, look, yeah, you come on down, you sit in a class, okay, you don't take part, you just sit in and watch how we teach. You get a vibe for the teacher, a vibe for the class, a vibe for the chemistry, you know, the technique that is taught, because some schools might go, well, we teach method acting. Oh, well, we go more naturalistic. We do this, we do that. You know, we, we teach purely acting on camera. We teach emotional, uh, you know, recall workshops or whatever it is, okay? You've got to get a vibe for the technique that's being taught there. Go in and, um, and well, just request an audit. If they, if they deny you that, again, bin them off because obviously they don't want you to see something, all right? And we to ask these questions, when you're at an audit. Number one, will the teacher at the audit be my teacher? You've got to be careful. Sometimes, and again, you know, this is sometimes done by quite established names. They set up these acting schools and it's ran by the such and such and such a body's acting school. And yes, they're at the first one. So then everyone who goes thinks, oh my God, I'm actually going to be taught by this guy or this woman. And then when they go to their actual class, that person's nowhere to be seen. 
Okay, they only went for the audit to sell the class, okay? So I want you to ask, will the teacher at the audit, the, the class I'm going to, will they actually be my teacher or are they just sitting in to sell the class? All right? Number two, what's the maximum number of students per class? And I would suggest if you're going to a two-hour or two-and-a-half-hour acting class and there's more than 15 students in that class, you are going to get no more than five minutes of practical time in front of that class. You're just not. It's an impossibility, okay? Five, six, seven minutes max. All right, so if you can get fewer than 15, that's great if you're going to a two hour or two and a half hour class. And then obviously you need to ask what's the cost and if they offer any payment plans. A lot of acting schools with integrity will offer a plan. You might not have to pay all up front. You might pay on a weekly basis. You might get a class free if you pay for three at once or whatever it is. But certainly ask what the payment plans are and uh, you know how much that, cl that class is going to cost and then add it up for the year. So if you're going to spend a year there, multiply that weekly cost by 52 or that monthly cost by 12 and figure out whether it seems reasonable value for you if it's in line with what else is going on out there so they're the, the questions to ask will the teacher be at the audit uh, will the teacher who's at the audit sorry be my teacher what's the maximum number of students per class and what's the cost okay now the next point is it can and i stress only can be a good sign if a school asks you to audition for a place now i say can because sometimes schools can be underhand about this. If a school is asking pr prospective students to audition, that can be a sign of oversubscription. So there's a waiting list, okay? And that proves the school is popular. But just be aware that this, and I know this happens for a fact, that this is sometimes used as a sales tactic where all auditionees, surprise, surprise, get a place every single time. Okay, and it's purely done to make the person auditioning feel special, like they've got this once in a lifetime opportunity because they finally got a place. And then obviously they concrete that place by paying their money afterwards. They're like, yes, I finally got a place. I'm in. You are always going to get that place. Okay. Sasha says, yeah, I've seen that before. You are always going to get a place. It's no surprise when you got your first class and everyone you saw at the audition is in there because they all got the place. No one got turned, turned away because the school and the person who runs it just wants your money. Simple as that. So it can be a good sign, but also you've got to be careful. And you can generally gauge that by asking around, asking friends, other actors who might be at that class, um, you know, and, uh, and see what they, uh, they think. Five, when you're in the class, I want you to consider the chemistry. I've already mentioned this. Of the teacher, between you and the teacher, and also the class as a whole as well. Um, is the teacher or technique right for you? Okay, and there are, you must realize this, you are like, it's a buyer's market out there. There are so many acting classes out there, right? You are in control of this. There are, depending on where you live, plenty of teacher choices. Okay, so you need to ask yourself, is this teacher one that you can trust, one that will inspire and not abuse you, whether that's, you know, put you down, you know, demotivate you or just take your money? Okay, and is this a teacher that you can plan to stay with for at least a year? Because I think you need a year at a regular acting class to really get the most out of it because you get to know the teacher, know the environment, get confident. Um, I spent two years at App for TV. Like I said, it's one of the best things that I did. Do you ever feel that there are only so far you can go with acting classes? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. A couple of years was enough for me. I was like, there's no much further. I can't take this any further. Um, then I've taken it. I can only learn more by being on set. And thankfully, the class had prepared me enough to start booking jobs. So that's the, the, you know, the benefit of a class ultimately and the goal is to get you to a point where you can book work and then work regularly outside of class. You should still definitely go to a regular class, even if you're like, you know what, I'm doing well right now. I'm generally in constant employment, but I'm just going to go to a class once a month, once every six weeks, once a quarter. I would never go a year without going and doing something. Okay, but there are plenty, depending on where you live, of choices out there. Um, so you've got to ask yourself, you know, do you believe that this training is what you deserve? Is it going to give you what you deserve? Is it up to your standards? All right. And if you have auditioned and got a place, don't just think, oh, my God, I've got a place. Because like we said, that can absolutely be used as a sales tactic to go, right, okay, you're going to feel special that you've got a place. Thus, you're going to be more uh, willing to part with your cash. Um, lastly, guys... I see too many service providers, to put this bluntly, in this industry, bullshitting their purpose. I see, I've see. i seen this like twice this week. This ultimately was the reason why I did this scope tonight, because I had a conversation with Chris Stone, great director. All right, Mary, she says you're just back from class, I think. I missed the rest of your comment, Mary, but hopefully you've got a great acting class. Um, 
But yeah, I had a, a, a conversation with Chris Stone and we were talking about this. There's too many people who are bullshitting their purpose. They are lying to themselves if they believe this and they are absolutely lying to you, okay? There's too many self-titled gurus are lying to themselves. If a person's purpose genuinely in life is to help you achieve more from your acting career or to help you get more exposure on your showreel or whatever it is that someone's promising you on social media, then why don't they simply give you their email address and phone number and do it for free? Okay, because that if they're like, oh, this is just my purpose to help people. You know, I feel absolutely genuinely myself, my purpose is to pass on what I know and help other people. That's why I'm on here right now at half past nine at night for free. It's why I'll be on here at nine o'clock on Wednesday night for free. It's why I'll put a podcast out on iTunes on Friday for free. It's why, like I say, there's 400 hours worth of stuff on that's on this TV's YouTube channel for free. Okay, that's because I feel it is my purpose. People do email me. I do email them back. People who are on this right now have emailed me and you will vouch for me. I will get back to you. I will give you advice. I will help you. I feel it's one up, all up in this industry. If I get you know, into a position to help someone else, I will do it for nothing. Steve says you retweeted my YouTube channel. Doesn't take much. There you go, because the least I could do. Thanks, Ross. Literally something I've been ranting on for a while, says, uh, says Sasha. Why don't they just do it? Yeah, like I say, for free. And I'm going to come on camera now and just talk about this for a second before I bring up any more slides because this is something I'm massively passionate about, guys, all right? People will, and something's happening right now as well that I can't mention, actually, because I don't want to mention any names tonight, but something's happening right now where somebody is taking something that I felt was owned by the acting industry, okay, on a social media platform, and they it was a real force for good, a real force for good. It was great. And what they are doing now is they, in the background, and you don't know about it yet, but they're commercializing the shit out of this. And they're going to take it away from a community thing and ultimately their purpose, that they're saying, oh, my purpose is really just to help you do this and get exposure and all this kind of stuff. Their purpose has changed massively. And their purpose now isn't to help people. It's to, in the background, without letting anybody know, siphon money away from the industry, okay? And like I say, I can't mention any names or anything like that. I'm not going to. But they are bullshitting their purpose. They are dressing it up as all I want to do is help you. Well, you know what? If that's what you want to do, why aren't you doing it for free? Because it's not your purpose anymore. You are lying to yourself and the entire acting industry. And if you're watching this, you will know who you are. And you are taking something that was great and was for everybody. And you are basically commercializing it because you yourself are not having the success that you require in your acting career to support you financially. Thus, you are preying on everybody here and everybody who's watching and, well, potentially me, but I would never pay you. And everybody else, you know, who will buy into your bullshit and you're basically robbing from them. You're looking at them in their eyes and you are stealing their money. Or that's what you plan to do, okay? And I know they are planning to do that. And it pisses me off. So if your purpose truly is to help people in the acts industry and you are a force for good, then I would suggest <laughs> that you don't do that. You go back on what you are planning to do and you leave things as they are so that you can say your purpose is to help people. Otherwise, you are lying, Okay, and that annoys me, guys, and was a real reason why I wanted to do this scope tonight. You will see in the next few months what that is and what it's about um, if it goes ahead. But ultimately, yeah, it's someone lying to themselves. And, uh, and like I say, if their purpose really was to help people, they would be doing it for free. But unfortunately, when something that they're doing for free gets a little bit of traction, their eyes let up and they go, oh my God, I can make loads of money out of this. You know, the reason... And I'm not like, oh, God, I'm a saint or whatever. But the reason that I can do this and I can come on here at nine o'clock and, and give this stuff for free and I will do on Wednesday and I do the podcast and all the free stuff on ads on this is because I'm earning enough in my acting career and my voiceover career that I can give you this stuff for free. The people who are charging you for this stuff and professing to be actors themselves are not earning enough acting so how can they teach you how to be super successful when they aren't doing it themselves? That's my biggest hang up. So please just be aware. Is this an acting class? Cool if you can't say no, it's not an acting class at all. No, it's definitely not. I've got a beef with some acting classes, but I've not seen one where I've gone, right, this is a complete and utter kind of scam. This is something where somebody right now is looking for people to recommend for something. 
and behind the scenes you don't know that to get recommended you have to pay this person a percentage of any money that you make so what you will see on this person's website as recommended and trusted people aren't recommended at all they're fucking partners in a business who are paying to be recommended that for me is not integrity and it's fucking it should be fucking illegal okay that's just lying to people in the acting industry anyone i recommend I don't fucking expect to get paid for it. I recommend Chris Stone for showreels. I don't want 15% of what he, what he takes from any of you guys on here who book a showreel with him. Because lo- how many people have? Loads of you have. That's like me going, Chris, I'll recommend you, mate. And you just give me 20% of everything you earn. Bullshit. I don't need your money, Chris. Because I'm doing well enough in my own career to not have to do that. So when other actors decide they're going to set up businesses to help people... You know, but actually they're doing so shit in their own career that they have to subsidise it with someone else's money by taking other actors' money. It annoys me. Um, so that's what that is. It's a bit of slightly, slightly salty rant, isn't it? <laughs> but that's what's going on. And, and I will, if I have to, call this person out at some point. And I will name them and go, right, this thing... And I will, because you know what? There's other people... Like There's some people who like quite high up in the industry who've been, who, who have bought into this thing. Uh, not as in monetarily, but I like invested in it with their time and supported it. And now someone is, in my opinion, just fucking selling out. That's all they're doing. They're just selling out. There's no excuse for selling out. Um, you've just you've either got integrity, guys, or you haven't. Ultimately, it's as uh, as simple as that. Just going to pull up a uh, another slide, guys. I want to end on this. This is a great quote by Oprah Winfrey that I wish everyone in the acting industry would actually take up. And it's really real integrity is doing the right thing knowing that nobody's going to know whether you did it or not. You know, so it's like buying, you know, how many people do you see on Facebook? And this pisses me off. Oh, I bought a homeless person a sandwich today. Well, you know what? You did the fucking right thing there. But then you just did the wrong thing by announcing it to the world, by looking for some kind of kudos or significance from your friends. Doing the right thing is always the right thing. You know, but it's also, you know, important that you do it knowing that nobody's potentially ever going to know that you did the right thing. How many times do you hear Princess Diana, Prince, all these people who die, and then afterwards, it's only then you hear about their charity work, it's only then you hear about what good they did, because they're not up on a platform going, look at me, how good I am, I gave some money to charity. Well, why don't you do it without telling everybody, because that would be real integrity. You know, you still did the right thing, but you wanted it in a transactional way. You wanted a reward for it, and that's not right. So, Oprah, I massively agree with you. Real integrity is doing the right thing, knowing that nobody's going to know whether you did it or not. And as a big mentor of mine says, Gary V, he says, doing the right thing is always doing the right thing. So I kind of put a shout out as an open video to the industry for people to start doing the right thing. You know, and if you are watching this and you are running one of these acting classes as a completely unqualified actor with no uh, experience, no credits, no qualifications, and you're charging somebody £30 a week to come to you and you know actually, you know what, you shouldn't be doing it, I'd say just fucking stop doing it because it's just not right, okay? Um, But I know people won't because, you know... They're ultimately greedy, but it's down to you guys to suss them out because they will have no choice but to stop doing it if people here are savvy and use those points that I've mentioned tonight to actually decide whether this person is the right person to go and see for advice or not. And like I say, disclaimer, this is not a go at any acting coach who has always been an acting coach or an actor who has decided to go to casting and maybe worked in casting for five years and now decided to set up some acting classes because they know their shit. There's a real difference. Someone said to me once, there's a difference between knowing your shit and knowing you are shit. And there's a lot of people out there who don't know they are shit, who don't know their shit in terms of they don't know their shit. You know what I mean? When you know your shit, but you don't know you are shit. You know what I mean? Um, But yeah, there's a lot of people who just have no self-awareness, basically. Um, Question, uh, do we put any acting classes we do on our spotlight? You can do, uh, Luce. Um, A lot of people do that. They put it in the comments section um, because you can write a little comment section above where your CV goes on spotlight. Um, People used to do that by putting a YouTube link in there sometimes when spotlight used to pay, uh, make people pay for uh, show real uploads. They don't do that anymore. There's no need to do that. But yeah, you can do. If If it was a particularly... Um, well thought of one, you know, someone that people go, actually, you know what, that's a really great acting class to be at, um, then put it on there, yeah. You know, at least people know, if anything, that you're active and you're out there. 
Uh, but again, don't put on one of these shit classes run by Mr. Nobody who's got no experience and no credit to back themselves up. Otherwise, you're just going to look like you don't really know the industry. Is it wrong that I find you more attractive when you are angry, Ross? Don't know, don't know, Fanny. People say they like people when they're angry, don't they? But it's just, um, it's just a big bugbear of mine. Do you think, though, Ross, this industry is saturated with actors looking for lucky breaks? Um, yeah, it is. And that's why at these people can get away with this shit. Because there's so many people who, um, who want to be an actor who don't know enough about the industry that they'll just buy into this stuff, which is why I'm saying, listen, if you want to do anything, if I wanted to be a plumber or I wanted to be a baker or whatever I wanted to be, I would research the hell out of that industry before I went into it. Yet so many people seem to wake up and go, oh, I've just had an epiphany. I want to be an actor. And then they just literally Google acting class Manchester and they go to the first one that pops up. And like I say, there is a shitload of them. They do no research. They're sold off flashy websites. Let me tell you, as someone who's worked in web design now for eight years, the web industry has changed. Web design has changed massively over eight years. Okay, Everything that I do for actsonthis.tv, I have a little web team who do all custom stuff. But you can buy off-the-shelf themes for websites, okay, that you can install that look flashy as fuck, look really, really high-end for $40, all right? 30 pounds, guys. And you can install that on a server in five minutes, fill in the blanks, and make it look like you've got the slickest, hottest website going. People go on your website and go, oh, my God, they must be good. Look at their website. And I see this. I've seen two acting classes today and I've gone on their websites and I've gone, wow, you know what? As someone, if I knew nothing about the industry, I would probably be fooled by this. It's only because I've done some more in-depth research that I don't see through this shit. I mean, I do see through this shit. Um, it's very easy to get a flashy looking website. Don't be fooled by that. Don't think, oh, they've got a great website. I'm going to go with them. You've got to do more research than that. Fanny says, I do this all the time. I go by visuals. Don't. Fanny, I could make you the best looking website going for 60 quid. Seriously, because I know what I know how to do this, I could do it in probably three hours, and you would be like, "Wow, this is really like top level stuff." And I've done it with a pre-made theme that I bought off the internet for forty dollars, and I've installed it in three hours. Seriously, um, people will pull the wool over your eyes if you let them. Um, but that's that's what's going on. So people are even getting better at web design. Um, you know, people are understanding marketing more, and they're just able to sell and peddle their shit more efficiently than ever, which is why it's more important than ever to be aware. Some of the best top London acting agencies' websites are very simple. They are, absolutely. I've been scammed five times last year. <laughs> so it's funny. Bloody hell, Fanny, you think you'd learn. My God, five times. Wow, well, you you know, you obviously, you, hopefully you know what to look out for now. Um, but these points on here, guys, that I've that I've mentioned tonight, I'm, I'll quickly just do a five to one. I'll throw these slides up again. Oops. Wait a minute. I was putting the intro on there. I was doing that all wrong. Here you go. Sorry about that, folks. Um, yeah, five. Well, actually, no, let's go one to five because it's weird going backwards. You've got to phone before you do anything. Phone an agent and a casting director to see if they've heard of the acting class, all right, and they've heard of the teacher teaching it. Have they got a good rapport with them? Do they know their work is good? You must ask the people who eventually could give you the work. The acting coach ain't ever going to give you a job. You are always going to pay them, remember. Okay, the casting directors and the agents are going to be the people who earn you the money. They're the people you really should be asking whether you go to this class or not. Two, if it's run by an actor, IMDB, I'm not going into that anymore, but if they've got no credits, fuck them off. It's pointless. They can't teach you stuff they haven't done themselves, okay? That's only if they're an actor, okay, and they're professing to be great. If they're an acting coach and that's all they've ever been, it doesn't matter. If they're an actor who went into casting, like I say, for five years before setting up an acting school, it's very different. But if they are currently an actor, pretending to be an actor, or they're an ex-actor who, who isn't working in casting or anything like that, IMDb them. Three, if it all looks good, request you sit in on a class. Once you've sat in a class, ask those questions. Will the teacher at my audit be my teacher? What's the maximum number of students per class? If it's more than 15, that would send alarm bells off. And what's the cost or payment plans? Make sure you multiply that by a year, as in going, what is this over the space of a year, okay? If they ask you for an audition, it can be a good sign, but remember that they often use that to sell you places by making you feel special that you passed the audition that everybody passed. Um, and consider the chemistry of the class and the teacher. Is it a right fit for you? Do you get on with everybody? Does it seem like the technique is the right sort of technique you want to be learning? Is it going to inspire you? Is it going to motivate you? 
Or is it a class where the energy is low, it's demotivating and everybody's whinging? You don't want to be around those people. You are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. If you're spending a lot of time in these acting classes around battery drainers, you're going to be demotivated. Okay, you've got to get a chemistry and it's got to be right in that class. Um, and yeah, don't let, lastly, like I said before, don't let these service providers bullshit you with their purpose. You know, all I want to do is help you get more exposure. Well, fucking do it for free. If that is your purpose, why are you charging me £15 to put my showreel on your website that looks like a piece of shit anyway? Just something I saw this week. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, um, but I hope, like I say, guys, I don't want to come in here and be all negative about the industry because there are some incredible acting schools out there. Give me some recommendations for ones that you know are good. Ones that I recommend and I know because I've either been to or I know the people intimately. Michael Jackson at Act for TV in Manchester, fantastic class. Um, Act Up North is now, it's not run by Peter Hunt. Um, he's now the cast director at Hollyoaks, but I know the class has got a lot of integrity. Very, very good class. Um, David Johnson Drama in Manchester, very, very good. Anything by the Actors Guild, all very, very good people. The act Is that Actors Centre in London back again now? I don't know if it's back again now. Um, if it is, places like that are great because they vet everybody. You can't get some shyster turning up and going, I want to do an Actors Guild workshop. Don't work like that. Or an Actors Centre actor center workshop. Doesn't work like that. Anything spotlight run, brilliant. Okay, they're going to vet people. Um, ICAT, yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, Mary, definitely. Um, but yeah, just do, you know, and ultimately, you know what? That's another thing. I, did, I can't believe I didn't even mention that on a slide. Ask other actors what their opinions are. Use the Facebook group, act on uh, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash act on this TV. Ask people in that group what their experiences are. Ask me, email me. You can email me anytime you want. Ross at um, act on this dot TV or help at act on this dot TV. I don't always answer people straight away, but I will do within seven days. Okay. Sometimes I get so many emails. I'm replying at midnight some weekends. Um, but I will get back to you if you have any questions. Tweet me. That's the best place. I can get back to people much quicker. At Ross A. Grant or at Act On This TV. Um, jump on these periscopes on a Monday and a Wednesday night. Ask questions. Um, ultimately, if we all look out for each other, we can all you know, protect each other and, and just help each other. And that's what it's about. You know, Like I say, that is, I feel, my purpose, which is why all this is free. You know, and I don't charge people for all this stuff. Um, the only thing, in fact, you know what, God, I mean, the only thing that I charge people for, because that's on this TV, if you're a premium member, okay, and you're accessing the premium content, your membership is going to charity. Every guest who comes on Acts on This gets a charity donation to give to a charity of their choice. George Bukhari, who came on a couple of weeks ago, gave it to the children's home that he works at. Um, Jordan Hogg, who came on just a couple of days ago, gave it to a hospice in his local area. You know, I've supported the um, Birmingham Children's Hospital, Backup Trust, um, who else have we done recently? Cancer Research UK for Dan Hubbard. Um, you know, it's all great stuff. Because I'm having enough success in my own career, I don't need to make money off you guys. But other actors who aren't doing what they want in their own career are just exploiting you all for money because they're fucking rubbish, <laughs> basically. <laughs> they're just not having a good time of it in their own career. And yet they're promising you they can make you a star. Well, why don't you take your own advice and go and do it yourself? Um... So yeah, that's ultimately, that's enough in it. That is enough. I've got my point across. Um, spread this. Please share it. If you're watching this on Twitter, normally a couple of hundred people watch this on Twitter. If you're watching it on Twitter, just retweet it. You don't need to comment on it if you don't want. Just retweet it. Get other people to watch it. Call, let's together call out the bullshitters in this industry and stop people wasting hard-earned money. All right? I would love that. Um, thank you for watching. Um, guys, I'm going to be back on Wednesday night with a book club. Uh, where's the book? Let me get the book for you. We're doing the book club on Wednesday night. It's called The Present by Spencer Johnson. It's a great book about living in the present, okay? Uh, ultimately, not, not regretting the past, not fearing the future. It's about living in the present, enjoying what you've got now, appreciating what you've got now, being grateful, and how to do it using four particular things to focus on okay it's not just as straightforward as going i just have to live in the present okay sometimes when you're going through a real hard time it's that easy to go oh live in the present you're going yeah but i've just been diagnosed with this illness or this person in my family's dying it's fucking really hard to live in the present at times like that this book discusses stuff like that it gives you strategies and tactics to live in the present more often okay and it isn't easy but if you tune in um you're going to learn some great stuff on that which is really relevant for the acting industry as well because it's a tough industry like we say um, you know, and uh, we need to stay in the present. We need to be appreciative of what we have. 
we need to be appreciative of all the good stuff in the acting industry because there's an abundance of it. I've mentioned the shit tonight, but there's also an abundance of amazing people out there, guys. So many. They far outweigh the bad. Um, but it just takes, doesn't it, as always, a few bad eggs to just kind of wreck it for other people. Um, so we just need to be aware of those uh, of those bad eggs, really. Um, but there are far more good eggs out there, and that's what we should be focusing on, okay? Just be aware of the baddies. Uh, so join me 9 p.m. on Wednesday for the book club. If you've got any comments on this, please tweet me, like I say, at Ross A. Grant, at Act on, this dot, uh, Act on This TV. Come and join the website, www.actonthis.tv, where there's a shitload of free stuff that doesn't exploit you. Um, join the Facebook group, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Act on This TV. Everything's Act on This TV, basically. YouTube, Act on This TV. Go and watch 300 hours worth of these periscopes on there for free. Um, and yeah, and I'll be back. Also with a podcast, I'm so sorry. I didn't release a podcast on iTunes last week or the week before. I'm going to record one tomorrow and one on Friday. So you'll get two this week. Go on iTunes and just search for Acts on This TV. All one word, surprise, surprise. Subscribe to the podcast. It's called Five to Thrive and it's five to 10 minutes of motivation every Friday. Um, well, it comes out, it's supposed to be every Friday, but like I said, this week's going to be Tuesday and Friday because I missed last Friday. Um, but yeah, you're going to... Um, you're going to get two episodes this week. Subscribe, and that's just going to give you a boost and some motivation and some inspiration as well. Again, for free, because it is my purpose to help you without taking your money. Um, so thanks for watching. I hope it's been useful. Has it been useful, or have I just come across as a right bit of bastard? Um, let me know. It was just something I was like, this has been building up for 12 months. I'm not having it anymore. Um, I'm getting some kisses and hearts. That's always nice. Thanks for them. Uh, love it, says Fanny. Drinking something that looks like pond water, which is called matcha. Helpful, says Lucy. Thank you. I appreciate you being here and watching. Um, I can see there's um, plenty of people watching on Twitter who didn't join via the Periscope app tonight. Download Periscope and follow ads on this TV, and you can join in with the comments as well next time as well. Um, so thanks, guys. I will uh, love you and leave you. Um, well said, sir. Good stuff, says... And oh, I can't read the username, but thank you. I, didn't, I don't recognize you as a, as a regular. So thanks for joining us tonight, if you join for the first time. Um, or apologies if I've just missed you in the past, but come and join us next time as well. Um, Hob, Ho, Hobo, Jay. Is that Joe? All right, Joe. Joe's here. She says thank you. <laughs> thank you, Joe. Um, appreciate you. Um, yeah, cheers for spending this time with me. I know it's 10 to 10 at night um, in the UK, whatever time it is in the, in the US. I know a lot of people are watching there as well. So it's the afternoon for you. I bet in the US market, it's exactly the same as well. It's an even bigger market in the UK. Be even more aware in the US. I would recommend great, great classes in the US. Anthony Mindel, legend. Super, super integral guy. He's got places in LA and New York. Um, Anthony Mindel, done a few, loads of interviews with him, a few podcasts, awesome, awesome bloke. Um, Sam Christensen, great bloke in LA. Um, but yeah, that's about as far as my knowledge goes for uh, for abroad. Right, I'm going to love you and leave you, like I say, guys. Thank you. Appreciate you. I'll be back on Wednesday. Um, get out there. And, um, and yeah, let's call these people out, all right? Bye for now.